All right. Hello, everyone. This is Alec, moderator of uh, Reddit's Hex Encounter subreddit. I'm very happy to have all of you with us here. Uh, just want to verify real quick that the uh, encoder has the stream going out. Indeed, they do. Very good. All right. So uh, today's How It's Played is going to be uh, D-Day at Omaha Beach, uh, designed by John Butterfield, published by Decision Games. For those of you watching the stream that are interested in actually joining us, you can join my Vassal game lobby if you have Vassal installed. Uh, you can get Vassal from vassalengine.org uh, and then download the latest module for D-Day at Omaha Beach. Uh, the uh, button to bring up the networking controls once you launch are here. Uh, and then you can connect to the server and then you can find the room here that I'm in and you'll be seeing the same board state I am. I am also on uh, TeamSpeak, the slash r slash playdate TeamSpeak server, so if you'd like to hop in that lobby and ask questions real time, uh, that's fine. I also believe I am set up here to keep an eye on Twitch messages, so if anyone has uh, on the stream that's not able to join us on TeamSpeak wants to send in a question. I think I'm set up to see the Twitch messages over IRC. Not quite sure, so we'll see how that works. But I figured we'd just start here at the day at Omaha Beach uh, with a setup of uh, the landing scenario and play through a couple of turns, uh, seeing the decisions that are made and how some of the basic mechanics work. This is a um, game that shares all the core systems with the subsequent releases, D-Day at Tarawa and D-Day at Pale... Uh, I'm going to get this wrong. Um, Pale... Pale... Um, not Pale Liu. I'm sorry, I did get it wrong. Pale Liu. So, the core sequence of play and how units move, etc., between all those games are the same. There are uh, variants of rules and details on the rules that are different between them to account for the unique challenges faced by U.S. forces landing on those various beaches. Um, unfortunately, this is the only game that has a vassal module, and it's a very exceptional vassal module. I think you'll be impressed with what you see here. The other games um, have uh, don't yet have vassal modules. I'm not quite sure what uh, decision is waiting on to get those out. Uh, certainly um, a lot of game play testing is done now on Vassal, so you would expect that there would at least be playtest versions of these things as a baseline for which they could build. But Okay, so let's start um, by taking a look at the map. Uh, what we have here are a representation of the beaches of Normandy. You'll notice a compass arrow here, so uh, we are uh, sitting on the north edge of the map, looking south. Uh, so to the left is to the east, and to the right is to the west. On the west beach here, this is the area of operations of the 29th Infantry Division. And over here on the east side, we've got the U.S. 1st Infantry Division, the big red one. What you'll see uh, throughout the beach here are uh, German defensive positions, uh, color-coded by their fields of fire. So a, a solid image here indicates that the enemy is providing intense fire in those locations. And essentially, they're pretty much going to hit whatever uh, is in there if that unit, if that position is activated. Uh, you've got the uh, the uh, symbol here that's uh, kind of filled in quadrants. This is uh, steady fire, so in these areas the Germans are going to um, may or may not hit a unit depending on if the unit symbol matches, and we'll get into that. Then finally you've got the open circles here, and this is sporadic fire. Now, generally uh, a, U a U.S. unit in those areas are subject to disruption. Uh, you can see that we're not going to be able to really get around uh, um, the threat areas, because essentially the Germans have the entire beach here kind of just sewn up. So our hope is going to be is that we can disrupt and disable enough of these positions that will allow us to secure these draws. Uh, and the draws are what we're going to need to secure to allow us to bring on heavier equipment and begin with the invasion. If we're not able to secure enough draws um, by mid-game, we'll fail a mid-game check and we won't be able to proceed any further. So let us start with uh, game setup. Uh, what we have here is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the German setup instructions, handily included. Let's go to our scenario here, first waves, and then instructions on how to use the modules. So here is the German force pool. 
uh, we're going to start by putting depth markers. Uh, and what, what you're going to have uh, in the game is you're going to have a depth marker, potentially adding strength to a German position and the unit that's in the position. So a couple of positions start with uh, essentially uh, stronger forces. And we're going to put depth markers here at nest 60, 61, 62 north, 65 north, 66 north, 68 north. Seventy, seventy-two north. And then finally seventy-three. Okay, so those units all have depth markers. The game has built-in functionality here. We right-click on the stack and allows us to send them to the next area of the game where they will be useful. Now we're going to drag the 88 units onto position 61 and 72 south. So, uh, so 61 we can uh, show the map by clicking the show map button. There's 61. Okay, so this represents a position that has support from a 8.8 uh, uh, centimeter uh, uh, artillery piece or anti-air piece, which is then also used for an anti-armor roll. Uh, so that was uh, position 61 and 72 south. That's over here. Okay. Next, we'll be placing the 75 millimeter pieces. Uh, those are going to be 60, 62 south. Oops, that's infantry. All right, 60, 62 south. And you'll see them with, with that black circle there. So 65 south is going to be our next one. And 68 south. So there's 65 south. 68 south. 70 and 73. So just to confirm, again showing the map, there's 70 with in the red, and 73 should be that last unit. Okay, so that's where the German artillery is placed, or at least the ones that are on the beach. There are map boxes here for um, a larger artillery and artillery units that are essentially off map uh, and providing support for various uh, parts of the map. Okay, finally we're going to put infantry units uh, in what are the remaining positions. So 62 north, 64, here's 62 north, 64, 65 north I'm guessing, yep, 65 north, 66 north, let's see here, 67 perhaps. Well, eventually, 66 north, 66 south. Okay, so 66 north, 66 south. 67. Where'd 67 go? Oh, of course, uh, up here at the end of the draw. So there's 67. 68 north. Oh, and I have accidentally toggled depth in units. There we go. Let's make sure I only have one unit here. Okay, great. Um, 71 and 72 north. There's 71 in green, 72 north, and that should be it. Perfect. All right. Um, drag the four mobile depth markers. I'm sorry, drag four mobile depth markers in the German reinforcements pane. Those are here into the uh, Kampf group. So one, two. Okay, so those have the four allocated mobile depth markers and we're now ready to play. So uh, got that set up. For those of you just joining us, we've set up uh, the um, first wave scenario of D-Day at Omaha Beach. Um, at the top of the map, you'll see a number of tracks, uh, both for the turn track and events that happen, the various uh, holding boxes here for markers. You'll notice in the Vassal module, those have been brought into a window. And then um, a card track here for the various card draws as we play the game. Uh, and again, that has been brought out to a separate window. So let me bring the card table up here. So uh, this is the card table, and it's been programmed so that if you click on any of these card areas, 
you get the anticipated behavior. So let's just go ahead and start and we'll land our troops on the beach. Uh, and so we'll start with the east sector. Um, there's some exceptional uh, uh, flip books on BoardGameGeek that walk you through the sequence of play in the applicable section of the rules. Definitely recommend having those if you're planning on playing the game or, or trying it out. Um, so the first phase that we're going to have here is the amphibious landing phase. And we have uh, on the east beaches um, these tank units uh, that are attempting to make their way to shore. Um, and uh, I'm, I've got the amphibious landing tables here uh, in front of me, and I have to tell you, kind of the best any of these hopes tanks can hope for is they kind of get bogged down in the water for a little bit and are delayed by half an hour, because otherwise they're going to start getting hit pretty hard. So let's begin with the east sector landing check. Okay, so each card serves multiple purposes. That has a section here for landing, a section here for events, a section here for German activation, and then a section, should it have it down here, for artillery activation. Of any time you pull a game, or pull a card, you are going to be um, only using the section relevant to the phase in which you pulled it. Uh, I see we've got someone joining us in Basel. Very happy to, to have you. Um, uh, joining the game, feel uh, free to send questions or join us on TeamSpeak uh, if you want to um, ask questions. So, um, okay. So here we're looking at the landing section. You've got um, th symbols, uh, matching the symbols on the units here. So let's start with uh, the diamonds. The diamonds have symbol C, which for uh, tanks mean they lose one step. So, uh, that's done with a shortcut uh, right click menu and then uh, step down control Z which I will just do here so you see we now have the, the, these things have lost a step the two pips on the left side of the counter represent the strength of the unit and uh, so those have just lost a step we look now at the triangle which is A uh, and the A result means it's delayed so it is now placed on turn, the turn 2 space of the turn track so um, this guy is going to get a chance to lift and try and land at full strength later, but he comes here to the turn two space. And then finally, the circles get uh, <laughs> result B. Uh, and so that guy just sank. That's what result B is for tanks on turn one. So that's awesome. So he sank. So we're going to have a couple of uh, tanks on the beaches uh, on the east side. Um, uh, so I guess that's good. Let's go ahead and finish the uh, sequence for the east beach. So now that we've done those, uh, um, actually, let me uh, do landing checks uh, for all for everybody first. No, no, I'm just going to go ahead and land them. All right. So then the next thing is, should um, we be later in the game, later in the morning when the tide has come in, we may land units across uh, mines uh, and, and get the Higgs boats destroyed. That's not good, but it doesn't apply right now. And finally, we land the units. So since we're at low tide early in the game, these units come into the first beach hex, and now they have uh, made it on land. So let's now go on to the other beach here, the west beach. Okay, and you may remember that the A result was uh, delaying the unit two turns on the turn track, so um, uh, we actually have quite a few units here. Diamond and triangle are delayed, uh, so you're delayed, and you are delayed. A circle uh, is not delayed. Circle is result B, which is sunk, so <laughs> not a lot going on uh, on this end of the beach right now. Empty beach on the west, two tanks managed on the east. Super. Okay. Um, so uh, we've landed all of the uh, craft that were uh, supposed to land this turn. Now we place units in the beach landing boxes. So let me go ahead and close the, the table. Uh, and again, if anyone has questions as we go, feel free to hop in and uh, uh, send a question in over the Twitch stream or uh, join the TeamSpeak or the Vassal server and uh, you know, let me know if you've got a question. Um, so we're now in the final step of the amphibious landing phase, which is essentially to populate the approaches with uh, the new units. And this is actually going to be uh, pretty uh, busy this first, uh, this first go. So let me bring the entire stack down here to the bottom. And we'll, uh, yeah, just kind of peel them off a little bit here at a time. Double clicking a stack expands it. So we'll start at the bottom. So this guy's going to Fox Green 4. Uh, if you take a look, um, he's the first 
uh, unit on the stack and FG4 is under uh, the image there. So that's uh, beach fox green 4. You'll notice the darker uh, tint counters represent the 1st Infantry Division, the lighter ones represent the 29th. Uh, this guy's going to easy red 2. This guy's going to fox green 5. Um, and for the infantry units, generally the designer adhered to the NATO symbology, even though NATO uh, symbology wasn't as much of a thing in World War II, or actually really wasn't a thing at all, easy red 3. Um, but it really does facilitate gamers understanding what they're saying. For tanks, he included a silhouette. Um, I find that uh, the choices here are, uh, for the tanks, simply aesthetic, and I have no problem telling a, a tank from another unit. All right, Dog White 3 is uh, some of these infantry units. Dog Red 2. And I believe um, the infantry units here generally represent companies. Uh, easy Green 3, I believe. Okay, uh, Charlie 2. Uh, so this unit here is, going, is a special unit. This is a Ranger unit, and this one hopefully will become an all-star for us. We'll get a little bit into it as we continue playing, but Ranger units actually give you a lot of flexibility and are able to take a lot of action on the battlefield. Dog Green 4 for this unit. Easy Green 2. And Dog Red 3. Okay, so we have now... Dog Red 3. There he goes. So we've now finished the amphibious landing phase of turn one. Uh, we've <laughs> landed nothing on the west beaches. Uh, we've landed some some hurt uh, tank units on the east beaches. And the follow-on forces on the west here are look like they might be walking into a meat grinder. We'll see. We'll see what we got going on here. Okay, so that was um, turn one, 6.15 in the morning. Uh, we'll advance phase here to the German fire phase. I will um, I'll do a pull for the west sector just so I get the card count right. Um, you, you shuffle at specified intervals in this game, so I'll do the pull even though nothing's going to happen over there. Um, but uh, So in the German fire phase, we're going to come back here to the card table. And uh, you notice that we've skipped the event phase this turn. And now we're going to draw a fire phase for the east sector. So wh what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the bottom portion of this card. And you've got um, uh, a purple, blue, uh, and brown symbols, and the triangle. So, we're in more or less going to be in good shape here. Um, for a position to activate, it must be in the sector for which the card was pulled, and have as many counters in that hex as there are um, outlines here. So, for instance, a single purple uh, counter is sufficient to activate this unit. And, uh, he's got two there, but he has plenty to activate. Two counters are required to hit um, to activate blue or brown. So uh, there is no brown uh, active yet in this sector, but for blue, um, you'll notice this guy doesn't have a depth marker. So he does not activate this turn, even though his color came up. There's a number of uh, letters here. Uh, ignore the letters for now, but what's important is that symbol uh, on blue. That's an armor symbol on blue, and that means that um, all armored units in that position's field of fire are considered non-armored. Essentially, a position's got to pull that armor bonus in order to hit uh, a tank, unless a tank's in an intense field of fire. So, um, as it is now, only one of these positions activated, and that's this guy over here. He did not pull an armor bonus, and so if we um, look at what happens for a tank uh, uh, in a steady fire, I'm sorry, a unit in a steady fire position, non-armored U.S. units with the target symbol lose a step uh, in this case. So we are do not have the target symbol, so the German fire at this point is ineffective. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we'll, uh, West German fire is inconsequential, but we'll pull the card anyway. So German fire has been completed. Now we get to the U.S. action phase. There are a number of actions that the U.S. player uh, can consider doing on their turn. Um, let's see here. Okay, so generally you're going to be looking at uh, move actions to reposition uh, and approach uh, the shingles or the dunes or the bluffs, get into some uh, uh, protective terrain, and then of course also assault the German positions. 
Um, additionally, there are combat actions. And so for the combat actions, you can either assault a position, which is what uh, we'll need infantry units eventually on the beach to do. Or we can also do a barrage. And so the barrage is going to hopefully disrupt the position and uh, make its fire less effective. So a tank unit can only uh, conduct a barrage against the position in which it is in the field of fire. So this unit here, let's see here, uh, red and blue, can barrage either red or blue positions. This unit here can barrage either um, uh, purple or yellow positions. That's what we have. I am going to choose um, to barrage with both of these units and keep in mind that there is an activation limit um, with the exception of using uh, headquarters, heroes, or rangers. You can activate two units or stacks of units um, in any given turn. So let's start by activating this guy. Uh, so he will take his action, and I will have him barrage um, one of these red positions. So here's the catch. is Yes, this is an artillery, but this is the two-step. So if I can disrupt the two-step position, I might be, uh, I might be good. <laughs> uh, is that what I want to do here? Um, so I'm just looking at now at the U.S. barrage table, kind of figuring. I only have uh, a strength of two on this unit. You notice that I have a strength two, the first number, and a range five, the second number. So at a strength of two, in order to disrupt a unit, a, a German unit, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to pull, I'm going to have to get really lucky here, I'm going to have to pull uh, that color and a diamond on this draw. But, you know, I've kind of had, had a rough landing so far, I'm going to have to swing for the fences. So uh, let's hope here for a uh, firing at this position, I'm looking for a red diamond. Uh, no such luck on red diamonds. Okay, so that was ineffectual. Go ahead and discard that card. Okay, this uh, gentleman here is going to do the same thing. He's going to go after um, the 88s here in the uh, orange. So let's have him take his action and go after the 88s. So I'm looking for uh, a, I'm sorry, a yellow diamond. Oh, hey, all right, so here you see uh, the German position color came up and my unit symbol came up, the yellow diamond, uh, referencing the barrage table. When both of those match, a two-strength unit will disrupt the German position. So I'll right-click here and place my disrupt marker. Excellent. Okay, so essentially next turn, or the next time that position goes to activate, it doesn't activate. Uh, and it doesn't also, it does not project field of fire into the hexes in front of it. That was a big win for me. I'm glad that happened. Okay, so we'll discard that. So, uh, unfortunately, there's no actions for me to take on the other beach. Bummer. So, U.S. action phase complete. And we're now at the end of turn phase. Uh, in the module, there's a handy-dandy end of turn adjustments, which will uh, delete all the action taken markers. It'll flip um, one disrupted marker to another, should it need to, and also clear the board here. So, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're cleaned up now. And we are on to uh, turn two. I'll just advance the turn marker. Okay, so that was uh, so far turn one of uh, D-Day at Omaha Beach. We um, biffed real hard at getting uh, initial forces on the west sector beaches, but on the east sector beaches, uh, we got a couple tanks on, disrupted a German position, and uh, are poised very well for a fun follow through. So that's a start. Now we uh, repeat the process. We're going to have a few more phases this turn. A, because we'll have um, some more units on the beaches. Uh, and, and B, because um, we, we now get events. But let's start with what we have done previously, which was the amphibious operation phase. So let's start um, by looking again at the uh, east sector here. Bring up the card table. And we'll do its landing checks uh, first. Okay. So we're going to a different section of the table, uh, which includes the infantry units. Uh, and I like starting going left to right here. So we see that this is an infantry diamond, which is result C. That drifts nine boxes east. <laughs> that guy ends up uh, on the British be beaches. 
Uh, if drift causes the unit to shift beyond the eastern moch approach box, yeah, that would be me. The unit is delayed. Place it two turns ahead on the turn track. So this guy just um, just goes away, <laughs> and he'll find his way back in about half an hour. Super. Two turns ahead on the turn track. Turn four. <laughs> That's great. Okay, I've got an armor triangle. That's B. Uh, he drifts one box east. Oh, I'll take that. Uh, I've got a circle, which is A, infantry. Drift four boxes east. One, two, three, four. Okay. Armor circle. Circle is A. No effect. Hey, how about that? Um, I have a B result here, triangle, which is a B result on the card for infantry. Drift two boxes east. So we can see here that the currents and the tide are, are and perhaps some uh, problems with coordination are really actually starting to affect our landings. Don't have a lot of way to predict what's going to happen before they actually hit the beach. And this diamond here is result C for infantry. Drift nine boxes east again. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, at least he landed, you know, in the right sector. You know, we've got that going for us, so that's good. Um, da -da 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 -da. Sorry, just quitting out some things. I'll cause some pop-ups. Okay, so um, that was uh, the east sector. Now let's go to the west sector. Tell you what, let me, yeah, do it this way. Okay, so again, uh, going uh, east to west here on the units, um, dime, a triangle is unit B, tank, he drifts one box east. Circle for infantry is D, I never liked D. Oh, hey, no effect, I really do like D. <laughs> uh, and uh, for those of you looking at the uh, materials available on Board Game Geek, uh, this table here, the amphibious landing tables, is one of those elements that the uh, designer and publisher have chosen to withdraw from uh, being online. So you won't generally find uh, these tables online. This you gotta you know buy the box for. Uh, so sorry to say. Uh, okay, but uh, I am implementing them from the table. Uh, triangle is result B for infantry, which is a two box drift. So he is now stacked with another infantry unit. I am going to have to fix that uh, Post haste, uh, they will be a concentrated target, and someone remind me to talk about that. Um, all right, the tank diamond, diamond is result A, no effect. Uh, another diamond, so result A for infantry, drift four boxes east, one, two, three, four. You can see that the westernmost uh, hexes here are going to be sparsely populated, and that's going to be a problem on approaching those positions. Uh, circle, result D, infantry, no effect. Speaking of which, we do have some people over here. And triangle, oh, I'm sorry, uh, let me reread that. So, um, Dog Green and Charlie Beaches are treated slightly differently. Let me just make sure I didn't move this guy off. Of dog. No, he's Dog White. Okay. Dog Green is treated slightly differently. And uh, for that table, it's one box west. So this guy actually pushes in a little bit here to the uh, rangers. The rangers have result B, which is drift one box east. Okay, so I'm back to the problem of being a concentrated target. This is, this is, uh, actually makes me not very happy. Okay, uh, so the next step of landing these forces is um, submerged mines. Like I mentioned, that only comes in the mid-tide phase. So now we will land our U.S. units. I'll, uh, uh, so we, they just go one hex to the up and right. So just do them all at once here. All right, so now I've got some forces on the beaches. That's super. And now I'll place units in the their landing boxes. So let me pull up back to the turn unit track. You'll recognize all these tanks as the ones that got delayed hitting the beaches uh, Previously, so Dog Green 2, they've now found their way back to the beach. Dog White 1, and Fox Green 4. Okay. So that concludes the amphibious operation phase. Clear the move flags and move on to the event phase. Okay, this is where things can kind of get exciting and you really lose some control and predictability. Uh, go back to the card table and pick up the events. All right, so 
Um, the events phase here lists the turns that the events are applicable. We are on turn two. German reinforcements. Place one each in zones A and D. So, you know, that, that's fun. <laughs> I always like it when more Germans come to the fight, so, so uh, that's good. Um, I'm just flipping through real quick uh, here the German priorities for um, placement. Okay, so here we go. So... Um, place in an empty reinforcement position in communication in the zone listed in the event. Um, so let's start with zone A. Uh, so you see all of these positions, reinforcement positions, have uh, A, B, C, etc., D, all the way to G. So zone A is going to kind of more or less be over here. Um, adjacent to a U.S. unit, nobody's that close. Within two hexes of a U.S. unit, nobody's that close, or the lowest number. So we're going to actually get a reinforcement unit here in A1, which will somewhat complicate our approaches to assault these positions. But uh, I guess them's the break. So here's the German reinforcements, and here are, um, and I believe that uh, I take the division reinforcements. Let me just check that this is rule, uh, oops, rule 9.3. So uh, these are the uh, the rich text file uh, rules. Okay, um, interplay da 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 da. Oh, okay, um, draw a German reinforcement at random from the tactical pool face down with that depth marker using the following priorities. If it's empty, do it from the division. Okay, so um, we're gonna get a tactical reinforcement here at A1. And the other uh, sector that got it was D. So A and D get reinforcements. And again, no one's going to be that close, so I have to figure out where D1 is. Okay, so uh, D1 just got reinforced. Uh, this draw now looks absolutely terrible. <laughs> I am not looking forward to taking that draw. Okay, so that was the first event phase. Uh, German fire phase. Okay, we're going to have some issues here with concentrated targets. Um, due to the drift of um, all the various landing craft, um, we, we got some units that all kind of ended up landing in each other's space. Like, so, for instance, I think here, yeah. So we've got... Um, we've got... Uh, Easy and uh, Fox companies of uh, 2116 that were supposed to land a couple sectors apart but are now actually all bumping into each other. The German gunners in uh, the positions that affect them, which will be blue, oh, I'm sorry, brown and yellow, will recognize that and be able to focus fire on them because there are too many steps. There are six steps in this hex. Uh, so what what that's going to mean is U.S. units in a hex with five or more steps are considered to match the target symbol of whatever comes up on the card. So it doesn't matter what comes up on the card when I draw it, those units will match the symbol and uh, will likely just get torn to ribbons. So uh, I guess let's just get started here on the East Sector with the German fire. And again, folks, if you have any questions as I go, uh, shoot me uh, a message uh, uh, through the Twitch stream. Uh, in the Vassal window here, or in uh, the TeamSpeak. Uh, see if anyone's actually... Nope, just me and the TeamSpeak. Talking to myself, that's great. All right. So, let me bring up the card table. And now we will do the E-Sector Fire card. So, um, Singletons, that's less than great, and uh, Diamond. So, um, I like also running these um, kind of east to west. There's a few things that you kind of have to consider. One is a given unit may not lose more than one step in a turn. And the maximum number of uh, hits or losses applied by uh, a German position are the number of units and depth markers in that position. So for instance, let's see, uh, where you lucked out here, brown came up and that's not a thing. So we got blue which does activate and uh, orange, uh, yellow. So this is actually really good. So um, yellow activated, but it was disrupted, which for us means that um, we'll flip it so that the counter comes up. 
um, so this unit here um, would activate, but now it doesn't. Way to go, tanks. Thank you for suppressing them. Blue activates, uh, and he there's one of him, so he actually does his shooting. So we can take a look here at the map, at all the areas with the blue symbols, and we really see the only units in the blue field of fire are this tank unit and this tank unit. And this does not have a tank symbol. There's no armor bonus to this. So luckily for us, uh, the uh, East Beaches are fine. Uh, we're going to take a quick pause and, and then uh, join the stream again in a second. Just one sec, folks. All right, folks, we are back. Uh, I'm just going to um, uh, wrap up the German fire phase here. So the East Beaches, we lucked out. Um, uh, the one unit uh, was disrupted by our tanks, and which uh, probably saved our uh, a couple of our units in this area. And uh, this one blue unit just really had nothing to shoot at uh, when he activated. So that's great. Uh, coming here now to the West Beaches, what do we have? Um, we have... Yellow, purple, and brown. Well, purple and brown are... Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a problem. Um, uh, with yellow and brown there, let's take a look. And purple here, uh, also super a concentrated target. Uh, okay, so I think we're just not going to get on the beach over there. Uh, let's take a look. So, like I mentioned with purple... Um, this is a two symbols here, and so one of these positions needs to have a depth marker, and it does to activate. So there are um, three units, uh, the maximum of three steps, but there's only two units for it to hit. We are a concentrated target. There are five steps here, and so really both of these are considered to have circle uh, as their symbol, as is on the target card. And so um, just referencing the German fire section. Uh, we match the symbol, and the fire is by um, one of the defensive nests. The non-armored U.S. units with the target symbol lose a step. So both of these units will step down. Um, so I'll just go ahead and hit Control-Z here, and you see they both step down. Now, one thing interesting just came up. You'll notice previously the units had um, no writing on the bottom right corner of the chip. But now they've got a number of two-letter codes. Each of the units are assumed to have uh, all the weapons and support that a company would have upon landing on the beach. Um, and as the unit suffers casualties, it does so in a way that slowly degrades what that unit can bring to the fight. So, whereas a fully equipped unit might have uh, things such as uh, a bazooka, a Bangalore torpedo, a Browning automatic rifle, demolitions gear, um, comp B, mortars, radios. Now you can see actually that uh, Able Company of 1116 here has actually lost about half of the gear that it needed on the beach. It now has a bazooka, a Bangalore, and a radio, and that's it. Um, the... Uh, this is very interesting. Uh, Alright, so uh, in the uh, uh, Charlie of Two Ranger here, um, also now as uh, a Browning and uh, a Bangalore. So, one thing that I had not considered, and that I would, generally I would, I would stop and, and look up to see the specifics on this role, because order of operations here does matter. So let me step these guys back up to where they were. So, um... 
I wonder if um, uh, you know, let me let me actually just go ahead and stop and take a look at this. Essentially, stepping down one of these units brings it from four, uh, five steps in the hex to four steps in the hex, which uh, five is the, uh, uh, the threshold in which you are a concentrated target. And so if I end up losing a step, um, does the hex retain uh, being a concentrated target uh, for the entire time or not. So let me just real quickly um, come into the rules here and just, uh, here we go. Um, well, there's only three pages here, so German Fire, number not page nine, and of course pages are not going to help us. Thank you, rich text uh, rule document. Um, so, that's section six of the rules. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Resolving German fire pond fracker in all positions. Okay, so it looks like here in resolving German fire. Um, for each fire in position, check the hex and feel the fire. Use the chart to determine what happens. Read across the row and the column. Read the result to determine if they're hit by the fire. Um, including target symbol, U.S. type. Yeah, it's hit by fire. Loose steps kind of show up. Doesn't have the chart. So, um, so at the time that uh, I evaluate this, it, it is overstacked, or rather it is con a concentrated target. So I, I would be inclined to believe that they both suffer the loss. Yep, okay, so we're going to stick with it. Um, so both of the units suffer the step loss and uh, we're going to have a slightly more problems getting up on that beach. Okay, so that was the purple activation. That was really all it could hit. So now we're left here with this uh, absolutely disgusting combination of orange and, I'm sorry, uh, yellow and uh, brown. And so yellow does have uh, a depth marker in this position, so it does activate, and brown activates uh, no problem. Each of them can apply up to three step losses. <laughs> And uh, yellow has the armor symbol, so it can actually hit armor in its field of fire. And in fact, it will hit this one. So, uh, as we had previously discussed, this is a concentrated target, and it is going to be subject to uh, hits. Um, I guess starting with yellow, it will need to apply, and this is a diamond, this is going to get hit. So it will apply a step loss to any diamond in a uh, steady field of fire, including uh, ta the tank. So three step losses available. One, two, and we'll do the first one here. And uh, for the brown position, it can apply, really, there's all, it, it cannot apply a step loss to the one that just received a step loss. So it will apply a step loss to this unit. So... Uh, well, that's terrible <laughs> uh, that we got both these to activate, but that is what it is. Okay, uh, moving on with the uh, sequence of phase, we now have a new phase, which is the U.S. Engineer and HQ phase. And uh, at this point in the game, importantly, the engineers are starting to hit the beaches and clear the obstacles uh, that were, have been placed by the Germans, which are going to inhibit our ability to land um, some of the assault craft uh, and potentially destroy uh, assault craft when we get to uh, mid tide. Uh, so those only happen in uh, fields of fire that did not have activated units. And so for this east sector, uh, yellow and blue activated. And actually, yellow did not activate, you'll remember. So blue activated. So these hexes here cannot have been cleared. However, starting here, the engineers could have gone to work. So what we'll do is we will have the engineers clear uh, these two hexes, which did not start. So we'll go into the markers, we'll grab the clear, and 
we'll start with this one. I picked these because they have three symbols, and it's just going to be a real pain in the butt to get those cleared later. Uh, and then we'll change this. Oops, no, no. Uh, if you're having problems in some Vassal modules, uh, use the Shift click to uh, uh, select a unit on the map. The uh, some designers uh, essentially put uh, markers in layers so that uh, you don't accidentally grab things. Uh, so when we're playing the game here, I don't mean to be moving this. Uh, and so it won't let me select it unless I shift click and now I can select it. So this area has been cleared. Uh, on the west beaches, uh, we had the, boy, we may not be able to do much here on the west beaches. Um, yellow and brown activated, which means this is all no go, all the way to this hex here. Purple activated as well, which means uh, from here to here we can activate. So we can clear one hex. We can clear this hex right here. And so we set the engineers to work. They, they were able to do their jobs in that hex. Super. Uh, go ahead and close that. Okay, so that is the U.S. engineer phase. Uh, we are now in the U.S. action phase. So now our units have hit the beach. They've suffered some losses. They've gotten bloodied. Uh, and now they're doing their actions. It's important here right now, the, the, actually the most important thing to focus on is that there are free move actions. Any ranger infantry unit may move for free, uh, as in not count against one of the two activations you get on your turn. Uh, a unit with a hero or inspired marker, uh, a unit climbing a cliff or ha that has a disrupted marker, um, HQ units, generals, um, and a couple of others. Um, we're, what we're going to do here is a self-preservation move, okay? And so a self-preservation move is a move that any infantry unit can make that brings it closer to a protective hex side. Uh, and you'll see the map here of all the protective hex sides. Essentially, um, if it is moving from a beach hex to another beach hex that is closer to a um, shingle, seawall, slope, bluff, or, or scalable cliff. And so, um, for instance, this guy has to move here, which will get him next to a bluff, which is a protective hex side, and that is a free move. Uh, same thing with him. I will choose not to create an overstacked hex, and he can move there. Um, Fox216 has uh, got his work cut out for him, uh, but perhaps these tanks can help provide him uh, a little support. Uh, and he will head here uh, with the eventual target of this hex. And those were the free moves. Um, in general, you can conduct your moves in any way that makes sense to you. Uh, so I'll just go ahead across both beaches and do all the free moves. Um, we are no longer overstacked, which is fabulous. And, oh uh, boy, this is really unfortunate. Both of these units essentially bring the same things to the fight. The Browning Automatic Rifle uh, complements. So I think I'm going to keep these units together. Um, for the assault that they're going to be trying to do. Um, that gray line, that solid gray line, is a scalable cliff. So that's going to take quite a while for a unit to get up. Um, uh, however, these hex sites here, this orange solid line, is a non-scalable cliff. It's a sheer cliff. <laughs> so unless we want to work our way up the draw, we're going to have to climb a cliff to get up there. So I think these guys are maybe going for this hex, which is two away. They are current, oh, you know what, we're in trouble here. They kind of have to go straight in. They are currently two away from these protective hex sides, and they have to move closer. So, and they're also two away from this one, two away. Actually, I think we might be okay. So we are two away from these four hexes, all of which are considered um, preservation move destinations and so we just have to move onto a beach hex closer let's choose to do so in a way that doesn't run us through a meat grinder and now we're one hex away from this protective hex side which is a scalable cliff okay um, let's see we've got some work to do over here again let's choose a path of somewhat less resistance and uh... <laughs> Very much not cool. Um, I will keep these units together now. Um, and we're just going to go for it. And you just got to try and get through it. Um, 
we'll need our tanks to help us out here a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to actually take my actions. So while I'm thinking about it, I've got this tank here um, that is in fields of fire for uh, brown and red. And as we saw earlier, this brown position uh, you know, threatened quite a bit. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to attempt another barrage. This time, note that we've got a much, much stronger uh, tank uh, here. So now we've got a tank that's got four attack factors instead of two. And that's going to actually go in our favor. So a uh, one with four attack factors uh, only needs to um, match the German's uh, position's color. His symbol does not need to come up. So let's start with that. So let's take him. He's uh, a fire, uh, brown from a triangle unit with four steps. So actually taken, card table, okay. No brown, I got the triangle. So uh, the barraging unit symbol, firing at a unit with a depth marker, yes. No effect. So uh, no luck there, but that was kind of the play I needed to make. I get one more move over here. Unfortunately, I actually don't have a lot of options. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is have uh, our recently uh, damaged uh, tank here fire at uh, his target. So this is going to be yellow diamond with two attack factors. Let's do that. I said diamond or triangle? <laughs> I got the yellow. Ah, diamond. Okay. So I'm matching the German position color but with two attack factors and it having a depth marker, I do not do enough to it to uh, knock it out of action. So uh, still the 29th is just uh, not looking very good on its landing. Keep in mind here that we may run into a, uh, a loss condition here, a catastrophic loss condition, which is essentially eight units on either beach uh, losing... Uh, uh, going down to half strength or, or less. So if we start losing a lot of infantry units, we can be in trouble here. All right, so I have four um, activations available to uh, my units here on the East Beach, and in a very similar fashion, I think I'm going to use them to uh, peg down uh, some of uh, Z Germans. Um, what are my options here? Um, and actually... Um, this disrupted marker came up at the end of the uh, the German activation. So the Germans activated. He did not because he had a disrupted marker, but now he's he's uh, he's lost that and he's fine again. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to repeat. And I'm going to have um, actually I'm not terribly worried about that yellow unit right now. I don't have a lot in its field of fire, and I don't have a lot coming into its field of fire. Purple, on the other hand, you know what, I take it back. I am going to go for yellow. He, he's an 88. He's got a big artillery piece. So um, I've got four factors, triangle, going for yellow. Oops. Well, I've got the yellow. Uh, let's see here. So I've got the German position's color with four attack factors. He is disrupted. So we are back to keeping that guy uh, out of the fight. Uh, and uh, similarly, I'm going to have this guy can go for blue or green. I've got a unit trying to run up the green's axis here, so I will have circle attack green with four attack factors. I've got circle and green, four attack factors, so that German unit is also disrupted. So, this could be good, this could not be good. Um, the you can only target and disrupt one hex of a multi-hex position. And you'll notice if I show the map here, 62 has two hexes. So this hex with the depth marker has been disrupted. That's good. Uh, however, the artillery piece back here has not been. So if green activates with a single uh, symbol, this position will still fire and it will fire. It will uh, be able to invoke one step loss. If it activates with a double symbol, it will not activate because it's been disrupted. So our East Beach continues to actually look pretty good right now. I'm, I'm actually fairly happy with that. So US action phase is a complete. 630 is done. We're at end turn. Pretty easy here. Hit the end turn button. Done. I'll go ahead and advance my turn track. We have completed 
uh, the first two turns. We are now on turn three at 645. And hopefully we'll start approaching some of these German units. Uh, and then we can resolve some combat. So uh, U.S. amphibious operation phase, much like we have done previously. Let me bring up the card table. We'll start on the east sector. Uh, I see A's and B's here. I generally like A and B, but not always. So we'll have to pull up the right play aid. One of these will have the... There it is. Okay, so we're on turn three, which is the same landing table as we had before. Uh, on this beach, really, we just have the triangle, which is A, and that's no effect. So he will land uh, without any issue. Um, here on the west sectors, I've got the two tank units. Yep. So we'll pull the card for them. Uh, let's see here. Diamond is B. He drifts one box east. Okay. And then triangle is C. He loses a step. Well... Of course, because it's our west sector, and, you know, we hate them. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a real problem. Okay, so that was uh, that. Was that. Um, these units now uh, make it to the beach. Um, one thing to note, even though we have stacked artillery units here, in general, I'm sorry, uh, tank units, in general, tank units may not coordinate a barrage. More than one tank unit may not participate in a tank barrage. Okay, so uh, we've made it on the beach. Uh, notice that uh, I skipped the hazard phase because we're not yet at mid-tide. Uh, when we get to mid-tide, we'll skip over this first hex, come to the second hex. When we get to high tide, we'll come all the way up here, essentially, to the German positions. Okay, so that uh, then, oops, uh, final uh, step here is to populate the units that are landing next turn. So let's see here, I've got uh, Dog Red 1. There we go. Dog Green 2. Dog White 3. Hopefully some of these guys. You'll notice here actually now that I'm starting I'm starting to get some pretty strange units here, Easy Green 3. Um, whereas uh, previously we had only infantry and tank units, I'm now starting to get, get uh, anti-aircraft uh, uh, units here, which can be useful in an assault role. All right, Easy Red 2. Fox Green 4 and fox green five. These, in practice, are, are very difficult to work with. Uh, they're, they're difficult to meet the requirements, to satisfy the requirements to activate them in a useful way. Okay, so uh, we've done that. Hopefully now we get an event that's less, uh, less terrible. So bring up the card table, event, turn two. Add a depth marker to one German unit. No? Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's go over here the priorities in which that happens. So, um, it didn't specify a sector. So, what we're going to have to do is we're going to look over the entire board. And you look for the one that's closest to a U.S. unit. So, for instance, um, this guy is two away, but he already has a depth marker. This guy's also two away, he has a depth marker. So, we're not considering him. Two away, has a depth marker. Um, so we've got a whole bunch that are three away. This is two away, but has a depth marker. This, um, we're probably going to get one that's going to come further back. Okay, so nobody's two away. Uh, three away. Nope, all fine. Uh, okay, so we do have a number of units. Uh, let's see here. We've got this, uh, nope, that's fine. This 75 is three away. He, he's a candidate. That guy's fine. Looks like these 275s are actually the candidates for, uh, yeah. So if equidistant, um, first one hex positions, then two hex positions. They're both two hex positions. Um, and then reinforcement positions, but none of those came up. So it's one of these two hex positions. Within a position type, the lowest ID number and then the lowest letter. So positions, da, 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 da. Positions without numbers are zero for this purpose. So let me take a look. So one of them is a sixty is uh, sixty two. One is sixty six. So I'm sorry, sixty eight. So I can go and look, but I'm pretty comfortable adding it over here. And so he will simply get a uh, German reinforcements. 
Uh, and so these are not for the tactical. He is actually getting a WN depth marker. So here he goes. All right. So the Germans are starting to wake up. They're answering the phone and they're starting to scramble, uh, wake people up and get forces to the fight. So that was our first event phase, and now we're in the German fire phase. Okay, so not a lot of surprises here. Uh, again, we'll start here on the east card table, east German sector. Okay, um, notice I'm, I am still ignoring uh, these bars down here. This indicates uh, the requirements for the Germans to activate their artillery uh, strikes. And uh, the Germans didn't get that together uh, until for about an hour. So we'll, we'll maybe start seeing that next turn, but not this turn. Okay, so uh, yet again, yellow activates, <laughs> but doesn't. Let me flip him over so I remember that I have to remove it. Um, blue and brown. Boy, we keep looking out with brown activating uh, within the east sector. Doesn't happen. Okay, so but blue activates. So this guy here activates. He does not activate. So blue requires a depth marker to activate, and he does not have one. So no... Germans in the east sector activate. Boy, the, the big red one here is uh, not facing a lot of resistance at all. Okay, so let's move ourselves over to the, the west sector where uh, the 29th uh, continues to just <laughs> whittle the way. Um, we see that uh, red activates, um, but I don't think this guy actually has anyone in his field of fire. So um, that may not matter, or it might matter. Nope, nobody in this field of fire. So that's only going to matter for clearing beaches and clearing obstacles. Purple activates again, <laughs> uh, and he meets the death requirement, and brown activates with the tank symbol. And uh, that, okay, well, that's great. Uh, so let's start over here with purple. So up to three steps can be inflicted, and we're looking for the circle symbol. We are no longer in a concentrated uh, hex with our infantry there on the westernmost extent. But they are in a steady fire here. So unfortunately, um, Alpha or Abel uh, takes uh, another step loss and is down to a single step. So you notice that he's got the blue band now, which indicates that he is now a reduced strength unit. He pretty much is, that brings nothing to the fight, and it's just remnants. And the module automatically is tallying that we've got one unit that is uh, counting towards the catastrophic loss condition. So uh, that's what Purple's able to pull off. Uh, there's no one else that purple can uh, hit. Looking over here at brown, uh, brown meets the the single unit requirement. It's got three units that are that are active, and it is going for circles. Now keep in mind that anything in a steady field of fire, and I'm sorry, in an intense field of fire, uh, pretty much is just just uh, in trouble. So for fire by a W in position. Um, first, it's going to fire at things in intense fire sectors, and so for for brown, that's going to be this unit, and it will hit each of them. Every unit uh, in target loses a symbol. Uh, of, I'm sorry, every symbol loses a step. So these guys ran in, and they just got mowed down. So now we're at three of eight, and not looking pretty. Um, it still uh, this position, this brown position, still has one more step loss it can inflict, and uh, again, our symbol here is circle and a tank symbol. So if we get um, if we get the right tank symbol, well, we might be in trouble. So let's take a look at all these other positions that Brown can hit, see if anything matches that. And luckily for us, nothing does. So, the, so Brown is done, uh, but the damage has been done. We really have nothing uh, coming to shore uh, in uh, the West Sector. Okay, so that's the German fire phase. Um, now we'll do the engineer phase, uh, like I mentioned for us uh, now, that involves clearing beaches. We lucked out in that absolutely nothing happened <laughs> uh, with our uh, uh, east sector. So what I think I'm going to do here is I can, I'm essentially going to just keep expanding this zone uh, with a name on clearing ones that are going to be very hard to clear. <laughs> So we'll move that. Oops, 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 oops. I grabbed too much. Okay, try that again. Okay, so we'll clear there. Tell you what, actually, I might just plop one down over here and uh, over here. Start start clearing in that area too. Those those areas with three symbols are very hard to clear. Uh, some markers clear, and we'll just plop a clear marker down here. Okay. 
<sighs> okay, uh, in this sector we may not get much. Uh, red did activate even though it didn't shoot, you know, hit anything. Red, purple, and brown activated. So let's try brown, no good. Segways to red, no good. Purple, all right, nothing. We get nothing on the other sector, just way too much fire coming in. So uh, we'll hide that, and we will uh, now delete this disrupted marker since that unit uh, activated and is no longer disrupted. Notice that green did not activate it, will remain disrupted. Get a little bit longer, and uh, Fox the Company uh, will actually be able to get to its uh, shingle. Excellent. So, U.S. action phase. Um, I like starting with self-preservation moves since they uh, are free <laughs> and it's easiest to think of. So I'm actually um, I'm actually thinking about pushing uh, Fox right up against that shingle so he can conduct an assault on that disrupted position. I think really that's what I might want to do here. Attacking across a shingle doubles the unit strength of the revealed unit, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So I think I might conduct a, an attack at the shingle from here. So that is his self-preservation move, getting off of the open area in the beach. No other units uh, on the east sector are eligible for self-preservation move because um, uh, Easy and uh, Lima are uh, both in a self-preservation hex. They are protected, quote-unquote. Uh, against these uh, slopes and bluffs. So uh, moving now to self-preservation on this side, the <laughs> very, very little bit that is left of uh, Abel and, and Charlie uh, are going to work ever so slightly toward the scalable cliff. <laughs> That's a self-preservation move for them. Um, golf here... Uh, he's going to have a hero moment, and he's actually going to go straight. I'm going to hope that I can uh, do some disruption here. So he will walk right up, and I, I, need, I need a big play here. I need to do something to this position. Uh, and it's going to be the same thing for Easy and, and Fox. They've, they're they going to go uh, there as well, and hopefully I can, between the various units, get something going there. Notice that behind the the shingles. Oh, we've got some really nasty fields of fire, but we're just going to have to deal with that. So those are my self-preservation. Those are the free moves. Uh, now I have to use my limited activation. So this is kind of part of the problem, part of the choice here, uh, particularly on the E sector. How do I use my two activations? Do I use my two activations? I've got a lot of very healthy tank units here. Uh, and so I can continue to disrupt these positions to make the follow-on forces arrive easier and easier. And that certainly is uh, tempting. I may do that. Uh, but additionally, I now cannot for free activate these infantry units. These companies now require an activation to do what it is that I want them to do. So um, that's a problem. Uh, and that's going to use some limited activations. Additionally, if we come up here to the turn track, if you remember we're on turn 3, um, which is fine, but eventually by turn 7 we're going to be at mid-tide. And any unit on this part of the beach is going to um, be washed away. Essentially they're going to drown. So eventually, uh, I'm going to have to move these tanks off of the beach and move them up. But I'm actually going to count on the Germans to help me a little bit with that. Uh, over the course of a couple of turns here, as these uh, tanks are subject to fire, uh, I'll uh, hopefully be able to identify which units are important, and then around turn five or so, start moving uh, some of the, the tanks I want to preserve off of the beach deeper in. For now, I'm going to keep them there. So don't quite have a good idea of what I'm going to do with these units quite yet. Um, I think that, God, I, just, I really, really dislike uh, this side of the beach. Okay, I think the thing i got to do is I've got to suppress uh, brown and yellow. So I think the clear play here on the west sector is to just punish these pillboxes. So I'll start with brown. I've got a four-strength triangle attacking brown, and we'll just start with that. Card table... Okay, I got, I got the triangle, <laughs> so uh, hopefully that's uh, a start. Um, referencing uh, the U.S. tank barrage table, uh, let's see here. Um, I do not have the German color, um, but I do have the tank's symbol. So the tank symbol, there is a German depth, and this is strength for it, no effect. So 
<clears throat> those are the breaks action taken now we'll do the same thing with diamond here notice that uh, I'm only going to be strength 4 not strength 6 I cannot combine strengths uh, and these guys are going to be attacking this lead position here uh, in the yellow uh, fire group so uh, diamond and yellow strength 4 let's try that again all right um, I got diamond so I had the same issue that I had last time where I have the position I've got the barraging unit symbol, but not the position color. And so referencing the barrage table, at strength 4, that is no effect. So um, I'm going to be honest here, folks. I am very... Con Oops, no, that was not what I meant to do. Always undo. Um, I'm very concerned about the landings here in the western approaches. Uh, if I'm Eisenhower uh, listening in to the radio reports, uh, I'm thinking about calling this whole thing off. <laughs> Because we are not going to get anything up there. Okay, so two activations here. This is very, very interesting. Um, I think I'm going to have to kind of define what I do here around two things. First of all, I do want these um, units here to transit their beaches without being disrupted. Keeping in mind that the current generally brings them to the left. So I'm considering disrupting... Uh, yellow again. He keeps coming up and he's got a very important field of fire. But I also need to attack. I'm going to have to, you know, if I really want to knock out one of these positions, I have to send troops there and knock it out. So um, it's instructive now to kind of realize how combat works and uh, so I can plan this attack. When I take an action to start combat, hopefully uh, in, in subsequent turns, what you will do is you will reveal the flip side of this German unit and you will see two things on the flip side of that unit. You will see uh, its strength, and then you'll see any requirements for the uh, weapons to destroy that position. Keeping in mind, full strength units have all weapons. <clears throat> so, um, with that being the case, um, we then have the terrain to consider. And so this hex side here is a bluff. Um, uh, and unfortunately, attacks are prohibited across a bluff. <laughs> See, this is why we look things up. That's uh, very, very useful information. Okay, uh, so attacks are prohibited across a bluff. Across a slope, however, uh, you may attack. Um, strengths are doubled. Um, okay, so here's what I think we have to do. I'm going to have to spend some actions. This is a scalable cliff. Uh, that's awful. Um, okay, actually, I'm thinking here, here's, uh, you know, this is my little Madden moment. I'm going to take this unit, we're going to climb the bluff, we're going to move here, and we're going to take out the 88. Um, that's my story, I'm sticking to it. So if that's the plan, let's have that be a plan. Um... Uh, and so let's move across the bluff hex side. So um, one thing to note is there is a climb marker, uh, which is used when you've got units that are um, going either uh, up uh, scalable cliffs um, or or not um, or slopes. Um, I got to take a look here and see if I get a climb marker for the bluff or not. So let's, uh, I've got to go get the train effect chart from the other room. Uh, we'll go on hold real quick. One second, folks.
All right, folks, we're back. Um, as usual, uh, what I really need to do is come back here to the rules on climbing, uh, just so we can uh, take a look at that. And uh, so what we're looking here is at 7.4, which is uh, climbing bluffs. And what you'll see uh, here is, um, one second. Oh, I see we got someone joining us in the channel. Let me see if they'll let me move them. All right, uh, Dutchman, if you are listening to the stream, just uh, in TeamSpeak, double click on the Hex Encounter channel. Okay, so while well, Dutchman, ah, there we go. Welcome, Dutchman. All right, uh, just so you know, full disclosure, we are live streaming this on Twitch and recording it to YouTube. Uh, so um, you know, don't say anything you don't want the internet to hear, but uh, thanks for joining. <laughs> okay, so um, how much of the stream have you been able to catch so far? And uh, do you have any questions at this point? Me, I just walked in right now. All right, well, welcome to walking in. I'll catch you up on where we are. Um, uh, so, um, are you also in, I see that we've got someone else uh, joining us in Vassal. Are you looking at the game in Vassal as well? I am indeed. Okay, excellent. So, uh, if you look at the board state, what we have here is um, we are on turn three uh, in the U.S. action phase. Uh, we've completed some uh, self-preservation moves. If you look on the right side of the board, the West Beaches, uh, the 29th ID is getting pummeled. And looking at the uh, East Beaches, the Big Red One is doing very well. So I'm uh, happy and uh, just terrified because I think I'm probably going to run into a uh, loss by catastrophic loss limit for the 29th Infantry Division. So Yep, um, so uh, let me just, I guess, kind of uh, keep going with where I am here, and uh, as uh, you have questions as I go, or if you want me to explain something, feel free to, to let me know, or if you've got experience with the game and you want to offer an insight, please uh, share that as well. Um, so what we were doing is um, I was kind of considering how my units on the uh, and the first infantry division would conduct their attack, and unfortunately, uh, there's a bluff here between them and the easternmost position, and you cannot attack across a bluff. So I'm either going to have to scale the bluff uh, to attack that position, or just ignore that unit for now and attack the 88s. So either way, I'm going to have to climb at least one bluff. And just real quickly, looking at the rule on climbing a bluff, uh, infantry and ranger units. Uh, with a bluff hex side may move into an adjacent hex across the bluff by conducting two actions over the course of two turns. So essentially they'll inherit a climb marker. So um, I will place a climb marker and move him to this hex. And I'll also place a action taken because this counts as one of my two actions for the turn. Okay, so um, we've begun the assault then. Um, what this guy can do next turn is he can start moving essentially uh, into position to attack either the 88 uh, in position 61. Yeah, 88 in position 61 and the 75 in position 60. Um, we'll just kind of have to see how it goes when we get there. But uh, at this point, I'm inclined to hit the 88. That being said, it's very important to me that the 88 not do anything. So I'll take one of my tanks here. I'll activate them. Uh, this one's got a triangle uh, symbol. So he'll take an action, and I'm going to do a tank barrage using a unit with a triangle symbol against yellow. So looking at the card table, um, which, by the way, for those of us, those of you um, uh, joining the stream or joining the chat, uh, the card table is a button at the top here that shows essentially parts of the board that you would have to scroll way away for, and you can see them. Uh, and also, one thing that's useful, um, I don't know if uh, all of you uh, know that you can do this in many Vassal modules, but if you go into the preferences for the Vassal module, you can um, just verify one thing real quick. 
All right, great. Okay, so if you go into the preferences for the Vassal module, there's a tab for turn counter. And even for some modules where you may not see the turn counter or a button for a turn counter, there will often be one, and then a dock into toolbar option. And so that's why in mine you see that I've got the toolbar uh, here showing uh, the phase that we're in. So, okay. So like I mentioned, the declared second action here is a triangle unit with four strength attacking a yellow uh, position. So let's do a card pull. I see the yellow position. That is very encouraging. So looking at the barrage table, uh, I do show the German position color and I have strength four. So it is again disrupted. Kudos to the tanks for keeping this position down. <laughs> so uh, that should be, yep, and it is, the end of the U.S. action phase. Uh, you'll notice, again, just assessing our situation here on the eastern beaches. Um, we've had been very successful. We've got many full-strength tank units able to provide fire support. We've got many full-strength infantry units that have made it to the beaches, and many of the German positions are disrupted. I'm very encouraged by what we have here. A lot of clear uh, terrain for follow-on landings once the tide comes in. Um, the story changes remarkably here when we go to the western sector, though. Um, we've lost nearly none of these units are full strength. Um, we're having very poor ability suppressing these German positions, and all of our infantry units now are in protective hex sides, but they're bloodied. They're bloodied a lot, and so I'm really kind of not confident in my ability to attack these positions, but we'll, we'll see what we get. Okay, so that's the end of the U.S. action phase on turn three. Uh, we'll hit the end turn to do the necessary counter cleanup and clean the table. We'll advance the turn track to turn four. And the exciting part now is that the German artillery has begun. So it's 7 o'clock, we're an hour into the invasion, and finally the coordination has happened uh, uh, to allow the artillery to start opening up on the, the ships uh, landing and the forces on the beach. So uh, with that, um, we'll move on to uh, turn four landings. Um, any uh, questions from anyone or any uh, uh, comment? Uh, would, do you want to run, uh, take, take your shot running the landings this one or do you want to watch one? <laughs> Alright, well I'll go, ahead, I'll go ahead and uh, run landings this one. So, uh, uh, as, as typically happens, head here to the card table, E sector first. Um, now that we're on turn four, we are going to be on a, uh, a different uh, table for amphibious landings. Um, things have kind of tightened up a little bit after an hour of driving boats in circles and fighting the current. Uh, units have finally started to figure out what they were doing. So uh, let's start here. I've got an a infantry triangle, which is result B. That drifts one box east and will become a concentrated target. Uh, darn it. <laughs> well, we're just going to have to live with that. Okay, I've got an anti-air diamond. Uh, diamond is result A. Um, okay, this guy is delayed. He's placed three turns ahead. These units um, took a while to get to the fight, so we're on turn four, so he'll be placed on turn seven. And now I've got an infantry circle. Circle is result A. Uh, any of you that are on Vassal, feel free to keep up the card table. So the infantry circle result A is uh, no effect. There you go. So uh, he lands uh, <laughs> and will become a concentrated target. Okay, so unfortunately I've got stuff piling up on the beach. It's a good thing that a lot of those units are disrupted. Uh, let me do the sec uh, landing checks for the west sector. Um, let's see here, I've got uh, that anti-air diamond, diamond is result B, that's drift two boxes east, okay, so he's going to stay here, but he'll drift over that way. We've got an infantry diamond, also result B, that's drifting one box east. Um, notice that this is actually a much heavier unit, this, uh, uh, but I don't remember the World War II phonetic for AH, so I'll use the current NATO one, Hotel. Um, he has a range of two, so he can provide support fire and a strength of seven. Um, in subsequent games in the series, D-Day at Tarawa and D-Day at Peleliu, uh, this would generally be referred to as a heavy weapons company. But uh, So this guy I'm going to want to take care of. 
Um, and I did move him. Okay. So now I've got another anti-air diamond. Diamond is result D. Oh boy. Oh, no effect. He stays right where he is. Okay. And then lastly, I've got an infantry circle. Circle is result A. No effect. Okay, so he stays where he is, and I think that's it. All right, uh, that's not awful. So we're not in mid-tide yet, so we don't have any potential detonations of the obstacles, although we're going to get to that soon enough. And so now the, the units come ashore. And like I mentioned, we're creating some concentrated targets. We're not yet overstacked. Uh, the stacking limit in this game is two units per hex. And, and at the end of, a, I believe, a, a phase, or it might be a turn, uh, in which you are overstacked, you will lose the unit. Uh, but in this case, we are uh, the issue is the number of steps. Uh, each of these now have five steps, which, like we saw in the previous turn, creates a concentrated target, uh, which pretty much just guarantees uh, some destruction. So we'll just move all these guys ashore. Hopefully they have better luck than their predecessors. And now we will uh, queue up the... Uh, forces coming on the next turn. So let's see, this guy goes to Fox Green 2. Let's see, where's this guy going? Fox Green 4. So I may want to move these tanks out of the way simply to free up the beach. <laughs> Easy red 4. Now this is, and this is actually one of the, where the real points of decision comes in this game, and, and, and in solitaire games that can really kind of be an issue and a sticking point is, are you playing a random number generator and do you have meaningful decisions? And in this case, certainly there's a lot of randomness and a lot that's outside of your control and a lot that pushes the board to evolve into a different state. But the limited activation, that you get two unit activations, really then does force you to make good but limited choices. Um, in a high uncertainty setting. So it's an easy green too. Um, so that's one thing that I think is really, really a, uh, um, a good thing about the system is uh, there's just a lot of really tense decision making because for every one decision you do take, there are three that you uh, deferred on, which uh, may not be great. And let's see, we're just going to go dog green one. Okay, so getting closer here. So we will clear the move flags and move on to the event phase. Okay, so we've had two event phases in a row of pretty crappy events. So hopefully Karma will come up here and we can... Uh, uh, no, no Karma. <laughs> Screaming memes. Uh, I've never even seen this event. Okay, German rocket artillery in Nest 69 hits a U.S. unit. Okay, so I'll show you where this guy is. Here's what. Here's Nest 69, uh, and that's this is this is a, a rocket battalion, uh, which generally didn't do much, but uh, now they do. Um, so let's uh, head back into our rule book here because I have no idea how to resolve that uh, artil that uh, that artillery. So let's take a look here at the uh, events. Maybe generally there's a uh, events yeah event page well page thirty. It's the last thing. Uh, for those of you that are interested, uh, the rules for D-Day at Tarawa and D-Day at Pelaliu are available as PDF. Um, so you can see them typeset with examples, etc. The uh, um, this is the only one that's got something kind of silly on uh, uh, in rich text. All right, event description, screen meanies. No, no, no. Here we go. If WN69 is occupied by the artillery unit, a U.S. unit is hit by the Nebula Warfare Barrage. Choose one U.S. unit to lose a step within the following restrictions. It must be in a beach or on a pavilion draw. Okay, got plenty of those. It must be at least three hexes away, but not more than seven. If more than one I'll bring in, choose a unit with the most steps among most steps you choose. Great. So between three and seven hexes, most steps. Uh, one, two, three, four... Five, six, uh, well, there's actually, boy, this guy doesn't have that long of a range, does he? Um, so let's count them out again. One, two, three, four, five, six is these guys. Okay. Well, that's super. The only people he can hit is Golf, the guy that made it to the beach in two steps. Uh, so we'll go ahead and step him down. <laughs> he now is one step. And we are now halfway to a catastrophic loss for the 29th. 
Uh, stay tuned, folks. This might be a short broadcast. Okay. <laughs> that was that was a good event. That was great. Okay, so now we'll do German fire. Um, as usual, we'll start here on the east. And um, keeping in mind now, let me pull up my sequence of play. Um, in the German fire will now include um, artillery. Um, so let's start here with the East Sector, and we'll resolve for the occupied positions and then possibly the artillery. So card table, East Fire. Okay, no artillery, so don't have to worry about that. That's good. Um, red activates, um, but does not have the armor bonus, so uh, this unit's safe. Um, oh, but here's the thing. Let's take a look. Uh, you, you can fire across sector boundaries. So all of these red areas over here, because the Germans don't care how the U.S. split the beaches. So, uh, so these guys could all be hit, too, if they're subject to a different... Uh, yep, okay. So let's take a look. So these guys could be hit by red. It's a red triangle, but without the armor bonus. So, okay, it looks like everyone is fine, and this is not an overstacked hex. So red activated, but inconsequential. Purple activates, uh, and it needs two, so it does activate, and it is a triangle, so purple triangle, and okay, as long as this isn't intense fire, and it isn't. Uh, one thing, uh, if any of you are interested, you notice I'm doing a lot of toggling back and forth here to see the symbols on the map, and this is an issue that you're going to have in, the, in this part of the Vassal module and also in the uh, printed game is, you know, the position of the counters will obstruct the view of these fire dots. There's an alternate version of this map within this Vassal module. So if you're looking to play yourself, there's a version of the map done by the community that puts a lot of this uh, fire sector information on the hex spines instead of kind of in the hex. It makes it a lot easier to read. Uh, I chose to use the default map so it's more familiar to players uh, joining the stream. So this is steady fire, and it doesn't match the unit symbol. So this guy actually is not uh, affected by that activation. Uh, neither is this with the sporadic fire. However, uh, let's take a look here. Show map. Show map. Okay, so these hexes are affected by the fire from this position, and uh, this unit here, oh, oh, and actually, this is an overstacked hex. So even if the symbol didn't match, it would count. So, um... Uh, he doesn't hit the armor, but he does hit the unit, so we'll step him down. Okay, so I think that is the extent of the success of the uh, purple activation. Now we're going to the green activation, and here we uh, lucked out just a little bit. So the green activation includes armor, so it can hit armor. However, it requires a, uh, a unit and a depth marker. You notice that the lead hex here is disrupted from our earlier action. And the uh, rear marker, the one with the 75, uh, does not have a depth marker. So this unit does, actually does not activate. It doesn't meet the requirements. However, again, I'll flip the disrupted marker so I remember to remove it. Okay, so as usual, with the exception of a single step loss, we seem to have caught an incredible break on the east. Uh, and now we'll head over here to the west where uh, we will just have our, uh, our crap wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> Yet again. Okay, so, uh, hey, purple. Okay, that's uh, something that always activates for us. So purple activates. Uh, there are some units. Oh, and we've got an overstacked hex here, don't we? No, we don't. That's only that's only four. Okay, good. So um, purple and diamond. Uh, I think that that actually doesn't affect anybody. Okay, so purple activates to no effect. Blue activates... Uh, with two symbols, so he needs a death marker. He has it, and he also goes for diamond. But yet again, uh, this unit does not have a diamond. So blue and purple activate to no effect. Brown also activates, and this was something that I was concerned about. So brown activates. Um, there are three units or markers here, so they can inflict up to three step losses. Uh, and we, I believe we may... No, we might have a concentrated target somewhere. Maybe not. Okay, no concentrated targets. That's good. So I'm looking essentially for diamonds uh, in uh, fields of fire. Um, when targets become plentiful, you prioritize. So you hit uh, targets in intense fields of fire first, and then steady fields of fire, and then sporadic. I'm fairly certain we have nothing in intense fields of fire for brown. Uh, and notice again that brown bleeds over to the other sector. Uh, which then brings us now down to um, steady. 
So um, my beloved <laughs> heavy weapons unit here is in a steady brown field of fire uh, and matches the symbol. Uh, as does here this uh, anti-air unit. Now you notice the anti-air unit um, is is actually um, unarmored, uh, and that that's a, a thing to note here is that um, tanks and certain uh, anti-tank aircraft, I'm sorry, and, and certain anti-tank units will be armored. Um, but a great many of these other vehicles that land at this point in the battle are not armored. So uh, they are going to be subject to uh, the fire just the same as, uh, just the same as an infantry unit, which is uh, going to be very unfortunate here. So um, it, this is a non-armored unit in the fire, so he does take a step loss, as does uh, my heavy weapons uh, uh, company. Okay, so uh, we're continuing the slow and steady descent into oblivion over here. That completes the German fire. Um, we'll now adjust the beaches. Uh, brown had activated, which means that through here nothing is cleared. But uh, aside from brown, it was blue and uh, purple, which means we cannot clear any of these hexes. We can clear these two hexes, though, so I'll take that. So let me uh, clone this marker. Oh, I guess, I guess we can't clone the marker. I'll grab a new one. Okay, so we managed to clear... Okay, managed to clear a few more hexes. Um, on the west sector. Let's go take a look at the east sector now. Uh, let's see, red, green, and purple. So purple activated, meaning we cannot clear any of these. Green did not activate, um, uh, even though its color came up, and red did activate. So we can actually push this cleared marker out uh, two more hexes in this direction. So clearing the beach, that's good. All right, I'll go ahead and remove this disrupted marker since uh, he is no longer disrupted. Very good. And I believe we're now onto the U.S. action phase. Okay, so like I mentioned, self-preservation move is a free move. Any unit can do it, or rather any infantry unit can do it. And uh, it's going to be very important for me here to uh, get people off of the beach and out of overstacked hex, or out of uh, concentrated fire hexes. So start to nudge a couple of these infantry companies uh, closer. Kind of wonder what I want to do with this guy. For the moment, let's head this way. Ah, you know what? I've got a disrupted... No, let's see. Yeah, I'm just going to have to... Just going to have to go for it. Okay. Uh, those are the free moves available in the east sector. The remaining infantry units are in protected hex sides, and so they are they are not eligible for a free move. I come over here to the west sector, and uh, again I've got the same thing. So this guy needs to move closer to a protective hex side. This one's two away. This one's two away. I'd rather not go through that steady fire. So I'm just gonna have to I'm gonna have to go this way. Um, okay. So while the infantry unit uh, here in the western... Oh, actually, I've got one more over here. Um, ugh. Can I phone a friend? Can I... <laughs> can I not do this? Alright, I'm going to go this way. Alright. Um, so while the infantry unit here, uh, Abel, um, is not eligible for a protective move, um, the uh, ranger is able for a completely free move. So activating ranger units actually does not is not considered an activation uh, or one of your two very limited activations. So um, unfortunately, um, and I don't believe I would have to, uh, I'd have to check, but I do not believe the ranger gets to activate his stack. I think it's just the ranger gets to move. So this is a, a a scalable cliff. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to begin the scale cliff action. Um, it's very similar to the bluff action that we had had 
uh, previously, but uh, it's going to take a little bit longer. It's a lot harder, and this is kind of why we send the Rangers over that way. Um, so... I just caught, accidentally caught the paragraph uh, about uh, uh, stack activation. Two units on stack may perform an action together for the cost of one action, as long as they perform the same action. So maybe they can bring them with them. Okay. Well, let me uh, real quick come up here to the climb a cliff. Okay. So um, it takes three turns to do this. So in the first turn, he remains where he is. Do not move it and place the climb cliff marker. And then we'll move him across the hex side, flip him to the climb marker, and then we get to remove the marker. So. Alright. Um, we're going to go ahead and just real quick take a liberal interpretation of that uh, Two units stacked together may perform an action for the cost of one action, and the fact that uh, the ranger actions aren't uh, uh, are free, and just grab both of them and do the climb cliff action. Um, this would typically then be something that I will would pause and uh, look up real quick on Board Game Geek or in the FAQ or the Errata. But for the purpose of uh, you know moving on, <laughs> we will uh, just. Uh, put these guys under the direction of the rangers. I think that's fine. Okay, so I believe uh, I've done all the free moves I can on either beach. Oh, I'm sorry. One other free move. This unit had climbed previously in the previous turn. It now has a free move this turn to remove the climb marker. Okay, but that is his action. So what I'll do is I'll mark him moved to remember that I that he's been he's been used. So now I have um, two more activations and I'll tell you what I want to do. I'm going to use one of them uh, to get us into our first combat. I want to show combat on attacking uh, this uh, position 62 south with a uh, Fox Company uh, of 216. So I'm attacking across a shingle hex side, okay? And uh, by and consulting the terrain effect chart, the shingle hex side um, bum, 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 doubles unit strength, but not the depth. Um, uh, and actually, real quick, folks, I'm going to uh, <coughs> uh, get a fresh cup of water, and and then we'll resolve this attack. So we'll take a, about a five minute break. One second.
Hi folks, I'm back. We'll go ahead and get started here. One thing that occurred to me before I do this attack that I forgot to check if we had an artillery uh, for the west sector, and we do not. Okay, so no German artillery this turn. So, like I mentioned, we're attacking across here, which is going to double the German unit uh, strength of the German unit, but not necessarily depth. So, uh, let's go through the attack sequence then. So, it's an unrevealed position, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to reveal it. Okay, it is a requires a uh, Browning rifle, and it's a strength of one. Now that's double to two, which is good. So uh, we go through the U.S. attack results chart. Do we possess the required weapons? Yes, a full infantry unit possesses all weapons, and the attacker strength is uh, greater and at least double. So we're actually on a very favorable uh, part of the column here. Okay, uh, but the German unit has an unrevealed depth marker, so we'll switch those. And what the table tells us was reveal the depth marker, and then we consult, we do the math again. So we, let's reveal this depth marker. Okay, requires demolitions, which we have, uh, and it is strength 2. So let's uh, toggle this back. So we double the 1 to 2, and then we add 2 more to that, which is 4. So it's a strength 4, requires two types of weapons, of which we have both. Consulting the revealed unit and depth marker, um, our attack strength is greater, but not double. All right? If the unit, uh, the, since we're doubling the unit strength, uh, the defender has strength 4, and we have attack power of 6. So um, what that then means is the depth marker is eliminated and the unit is disrupted. So that's actually not a bad result here. And sometimes it takes a couple of turns, but so let's do that. We'll eliminate the depth and we will disrupt uh, the position. Okay, and we'll mark this as having taken an action. Not a bad turn here. So we did our assault. Um, we didn't knock them out in one swoop, one, uh, one fell swoop, but, uh, honestly, that's kind of a, doesn't happen very often, uh, but overall we did well. We were starting to chip away at that green position. Well, I have one remaining activation, and yet again now I am, uh, deliberating, I'm de deliberating activating the tanks, but honestly, we've got enough disrupted units where I'm thinking about beginning um, some more movement. So what I think I'll do instead is I'll begin a climb cliff action for uh, Lima Company of 316 here. Uh, and I will have him do a climb cliff. So it'll take him three turns, but eventually he'll climb that cliff and then I'll have to climb a bluff and hopefully then be in the position to attack uh, Nest 60 here. And uh, shouldn't be subject to too much fire. But uh, okay, so I'm happy with the E sector. Very happy with the E sector. Um, uh, let's turn our attention back to this train wreck of a west sector. <laughs> okay, what I think we just kind of have to do is we just kind of have to go for it. I mean, I really think there's not much we can, uh, not much more we can do here. Um, we do have a full strength tank, which is a novelty for us. Actually, we've got two. Let me adjust the stack. Okay, I got two full strength tanks, which is somewhat of a novelty. I don't really usually have those. But between these two stacks, I actually have quite a bit of firepower, if only three weapons to bring against this hex. So I think I'm going to have to try and do an assault again. Um, this entire hex activates for one action. Uh, the buddies can join in, but they're going to require a second action, which we'll go ahead and do. So it'll take both actions to activate all of these units against the yellow nest. So like we did before, we will uh, flip and reveal the unit. It is a um, strength one, double to two, I'm attacking across a shingle, which requires a Bangalore, which I have. Woohoo, easy brought a Bangalore. <laughs> okay, so I have six attack factors. They have two, which so I have more than double, and I have the necessary weapons. So we're gonna do just like what we did before, and we'll reveal their depth marker to see that we're toast. <laughs> okay, not terribly surprising given how whittled down these units are, but um, 
We do not require possess the required weapons. Now we require demolitions. And between our three units, we have a Bangalore, a Browning, and a Mortar. We do not have the demolitions. So uh, we do not require we do not possess the required weapons. Our attack strength is at least double. Here we lucked out. Um, is one doubles to two, and the two adds one to that to three. So our six to his three is double. Uh, the German unit has a um, revealed depth marker. So the Germans are disrupted, and we have optional attrition. Okay, so this is this is something I'm going to consider here. So the Germans being disrupted means now the yellow position is disrupted, which is clearly a thing that I wanted to happen, right? So now I don't have to waste a tank activation to disrupt this unit. So yellow is now disrupted. That's good. Um, optional attrition. I may, at my option, remove a step from an adjacent attacking U.S. unit of my choice and eliminate the depth marker. This is key. I have two fairly broken units, and uh, that depth marker I don't have the weapon for. And I, I could spend a couple of turns to you know, move... Uh, you know, hotel over, but you know who knows how much he gets mowed down. So I think I'm actually going to take that option um, and uh, flip those. I'll uh, suffer my attrition and uh, get rid of this guy since he required a separate activation. So uh, eliminate. Okay, he's gone. <laughs> That's great. Okay, and we'll just put our uh, uh, action taken. Okay, so. Uh, the action phase is done. Uh, we have uh, started some climbing in a couple of places. We've resumed climbing. We've assaulted two positions with actually, in both cases, a degree of success. And very importantly here, we've disrupted one of the German positions um, on this just meat grinder of a, uh, of a section of the beach. <clears throat> so I'll take that. Okay, so that is the end of the U.S. action phase. So we'll just go into our intern adjustments. And... Um, move on to turn five here. All right, so before we proceed in turn five, and turn five might be the last one on this stream, what I might do separately is record um, me finishing out uh, <laughs> a couple more turns uh, offline and post that to YouTube. Um, before we start on uh, uh, before we start on this turn, uh, Dutch, you got any, uh, got anything, any questions, any concerns? Mm. Well, no, actually, so here's a question for you. Do, do you have the game and you've not let let it hit the table yet? Uh, are you considering purchasing one of the two imprint ones, uh, Tarawa, uh, Palaliu? Uh, what, what, what's your familiarity with uh, the system or even with war games in general? Um, hello, Alex. Um, I'm a long-time gamer. <laughs> Okay. Well, the the good news is you'll find that once you get into that rhythm, it, it actually all falls into place. And I, and I, I would recommend one thing I recommend to a lot of people when they're going to pick up the game is don't get stuck reading the book cover to cover. Right? Don't start on page one and try and make it to page you know, like geez, in some of these GMT games, right, page forty eight, <laughs> and and expect to have digested everything. You know, uh, for people coming from uh, watching this stream coming from say a Euro background or or you know one of these mass market type games. You're looking at, uh, you know, typically rules burden on the order of eight or twelve pages, and you know it's it's all very very straightforward. Here, of course, we've got a lot of minutia, right? And so the the way that I find that works the very best on this is to start just start from the sequence of play, you know. And if if uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll point people back to that flip book. The flip book does a very good job of stitching it all together. But even if you just look in the box, there's a play aid. 
uh, came in the box um, that just says the basic game sequence of play. And I would just, you know, start there, you know, set up the scenario and then just walk there and it'll point you to a couple of places um, and, uh, you know, just you just get going. But I think this is great. So um, I think we can wrap up here on this last turn, kind of like we did with the first turn. I'm just kind of, let's just go through the sequence of play. Um, and uh, go through those motions and uh, there's enough repetition in the game that eventually you find yourself just kind of doing things you know like out of out of memory so uh, so yes yeah, so let's take uh, the next amphibious operation phase um, and, uh, bringing up the card table uh, and drawing a card for the east sector we see here that uh, not a lot of units to land, actually. We've got uh, three infantry units, one of them a heavy weapons company. Uh, so the easternmost unit, the one on our left, is a B symbol. And let me pull up the amphibious landing card. And that'll tell me what happens here. Okay, we're on turn five. B uh, is drift one box east. So this guy just nudges over here to fox screen one. The circle is A, okay, for this beach. So that's an A symbol, which is no effect. So this guy's going to land right where he's pointing. And then finally, the diamond, again, is symbol B, which is drifting one box east. That I like. That actually, as I had mentioned in the German fire phase, if you look at the steps of a unit, uh, which are shown by the pips on the counter, on the left side of the counter, a total of five pips results in a concentrated target, which is much easier for the Germans to hit. So him drifting one hex here is actually fairly useful. It deconflicts that uh, that landing zone a little bit. Okay, that is good. Let me head over here to the West Beach. Draw my card. Okay, so um, Diamond is symbol C. That's an infantry unit referencing the amphibious landing table. He drifts four boxes east. Oh, okay, so we're actually going to get into uh, an interesting rule. <laughs> he is now cross divisional lines, right? He he is an, uh, a company in the 29th Infantry Division, uh, but his boat just got so turned around that it is now um, over been the first. So um, what happened then, and what, how the game manages it, is essentially um, he has been transferred between the divisions. He is now owned by the other division, um, and we will mark him with the division transferred uh, stripe there, just so that we know that. Okay, moving on to the other units. This triangle infantry unit is column A, no effect. Circle infantry unit is column B, drifts one box. Diamond Infantry Unit, Column C, drifting to four boxes. One, two, three, four. Ugh. And I'm going to have to look up that rule on overstacking, aren't I? <laughs> Damn it. And uh, finally, um, Triangle Infantry is Column A. No effect, so he stays where he's gone. Okay. Uh, so that is that. Uh, again, we've not yet hit mid-tide. Mid-tide comes on turn 7, I believe. Yes, turn 7. We're only on turn 5. So um, no uh, explosions, although we have started clearing the, these areas. And so now units hit the shore. Like I mentioned, we've got a stacking issue. So we'll take a brief pause to reference uh, when stacking limits are enforced. Thankfully, for those of you new to wargaming, uh, the concept of stacking and stacking limits is uh, one of those you learn it once and it pays over forever. Uh, and so uh, most games are fairly clear about uh, how stacking limits work. So let me just uh, stack. Stacking limits, there we go. Okay. One or two U.S. units may occupy a hex at the end of a U.S. action phase. Stacking limits apply only at the end of the U.S. action phase. Good to know. All right. Uh, and the final part of the amphibious operation phase is um, taking the units from the turn track and putting them on their approach beaches. So here, actually, you'll notice we just now started to get some flexibility. Now, instead of specifying which specific beach the unit is going to land in, you have your choice within the beach. So this top unit that I have now, uh, Mike Company, is allocated to Dog Red. So I can place him in any of these three approach hexes, um, and I will. 
<laughs> so I'm going to do uh, myself a favor. Now I'll put him in Dog Red 3. Um, but I think Dog Red 2 is probably a good spot for him. Dog White here on this artillery unit. Um, dog White. And uh, really I think any of them will be fine. I don't want to push him too far east because I don't want him to drift and result in overstacking uh, another unit. Um, let's see, I've got uh, rangers going to dog green. I'll put them as westmost as I can. I think that's probably a good idea. And now I'm starting to get HQ and uh, uh, headquarters units and generals. Alright, so this is now going to increase my ability to make decisions. And this is very important. Headquarters and generals um, uh, will activate units in their hex and adjacent hexes without requiring you to spend one of your limited activations. So this is now what's really going to open things up. We've been piling on the beach and kind of been really slow getting our act together and moving on, but now we're getting some leadership on the beach and, and we'll be able to move that. Uh, importantly here, um, the, uh, the stacking, they, they don't affect stacking limits. So I'm going to put the HQ like right here in the middle. <laughs> And we'll get this guy to just grab a whole bunch with him, hopefully. And uh, we'll move on. So, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so, and then, uh, let's see, you got Fox Green on this artillery piece. Uh, like I said, sometimes these artillery pieces are, are hard to actually get stuck on the beach. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's fine. And then uh, let me take a look at generals. So, so when you place generals, they usually go with a unit. You know, you don't see you know, like one uh, general wading ashore. So, let me just take a look real quick in the uh, in the rules about uh, getting getting generals uh, to shore. I believe they stack with the unit, and I think it can be with an HQ. So, landing U.S. units. Da, 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 da. Generals and HQ units do not count against the limit. A general may not be placed alone in a beach landing box. If there are any units scheduled to arrive on the same turn uh, uh, with which he should be placed. Okay, so uh, the, the general needs to come in on uh, Dog White Beach, which is uh, the same as his, uh, as his headquarters. So he's got to go with the headquarters for now. Once they get to the beach, he can kind of split off and have his command element, you know, kind of assist him in one fight and have him directly lead in another, so... For now, we'll have that be the placement. Okay, great. So we've completed U.S. amphibious operation. We've got some more forces ashore, and we've prepped the next couple. Clearing the move flag. And first event phase. Okay. Fourth times the charm. <laughs> we can't have three awful events in a row, or four awful events in a row, right? Right. Add a depth marker to one German unit. <laughs> okay, never mind. Um, so... Uh, this is one of those uh, really uh, crummy things. So, um, adding this depth marker, we do it close to a position closest to a U.S. unit. Recall that we now have two units adjacent to U.S. units that have had depth markers removed uh, by our recent attack. So these guys are top of our list. This guy's also adjacent, but he has a depth marker. You can't have more than one depth marker. So it's our recent victims now are going to get uh, death markers. They're both two uh, unit WNs. Um, and so let me just read 9.2 real quick to make sure I get it in the right one. So 9.2 is uh, placing death markers. All right, if there's more than one LPM type, place the death marker in the position with the lowest setting numbers. Okay, well, I guess we're just going to go um, with going with the uh, the lowest ID number. Oh, which is actually the Western one. So this one is uh, sixty-one. Sorry, I'm sorry, sixty-two. So he is going to gain a depth marker, which stinks, but. 
we got a strong unit there, we can try again. So, let's see, German reinforcements, WN depth marker, and here we go. Okay, so less awesome, but we do have now a new depth marker, which we'll have to beat out, <laughs> beat out of there. Okay, so that was our event. German fire. So as we did before, we will draw one for the E sector and resolve all of its fire. Um, we have brown, yellow, and green activating. Uh, you'll re okay. So um, yellow fails to activate because it is disrupted. I will flip this marker so I remember to pick it up in a subsequent phase. So that's good. Um, green does activate. So green only has one symbol here on the card I drew, which means that only one undisrupted marker is required to activate the position. So this guy here is able to is able to activate. And again, we'll have to remove the disrupted marker. So that stinks. Uh, but green does fire. So green fires at diamond. The star here, you'll notice in the green uh, box on the card we drew, indicates that the this activation can uh, damage or eliminate leaders uh, uh, and headquarters units. So um, that's generally they are immune from fire. These may specifically get them. Uh, but at this point in this sector we don't have any of those so that doesn't apply here. So okay. Um, yeah, show map. So the first priority are these intense fields of fire, these green intense fields of fire, and those... Ugh, okay. Um, thankfully, um, only one undisrupted uh, marker was in this position, so it can only inflict one step loss, despite the fact that I have two units there that would, would be eligible to receive those losses. So, I have to find the priority in which the German, uh, essentially, in, in which the Germans hit. Um, so just flipping real quick through those play aids. Uh, to find all right here we go select units closest to the firing position uh, are the ones that would receive it and so we'll consider this hex to be the firing position it is uh, one two three <laughs> one two three it's three away from H so that's the same um, among units with the most steps I choose okay so here's my choices I can either have this guy take his second step loss which would really weaken our push right here and also start the the big red one on its scale down in terms of its uh, loss condition or i can have golf here take a step loss i'm looking pretty strong on this side so i think i can have golf take the loss and not be too worried about it okay and brown is the final color and as we mentioned previously there's not a lot of brown uh, on this side of the board so we are fine there uh, heading over to the west sector. Uh, I see the armor symbol. That's fantastic. Let's uh, well, let's start with that. We've got the uh, yellow diamond. So this yellow position activates, but it only has a single. All right, there's only one card here, not two, one uh, box. So it only requires a single, just like the other one. So it does activate, and this one has a depth marker, so it can take two. It can inflict two steps. And we'll flip this disruption marker, so I remember to remove it. Um, all right, let's take a look at where uh, the intense fields of fire are for yellow. Okay, it looks like we have one unit in an intense field of fire for yellow, this one here. That is now our fifth serious casualty. Um, and now we get to the non-intense non, uh, fields of fire. We have one more step that we can take. And so we're looking for the diamonds. Thankfully, none of these guys. Uh, we are way overstacked here, actually, so this guy counts, as does the tank. So we're going to lose some people there, possibly. Yeah, that's part of the yellow field of fire. All right, so um, again, we've got to select by priority, so we got to go by uh, distance here. We've already lost this one. We're looking for diamonds. Uh, this is one, two, three, four away. No problem. This guy. Is he, is he even in that field of fire? He is not. Okay. 
So we got to choose between the tank and the infantry unit. Uh, honestly, I'm just going to have to have all of these people match that symbol, actually. So what I might do, yeah, one thing I want to do is I'm just going to have uh, the weaker take, uh, tank unit eat it. Oh, nope, I've got to choose one with the most steps. <laughs> Darn it! Okay, so the one here with the most steps. I'm going off the selection priorities on the German fire card. Uh, essentially, intense fire first, then spread, then um, steady fire. Within steady fire, closest to the position. And uh, this hex is the closest to the position. And within closest to the position, you got to go with most steps. So this guy takes a step loss. Okay, and we are now down to two steps on him. And that was two steps losses inflicted by this position, which is all they could do since they were disrupted. That's yellow. Purple activates again, as he always does. Uh, he's firing at diamond. Um, I don't believe we have any overstacking in purple, so that's fine. And we don't have any diamond up for him. So purple is just out of luck. Uh, finally, blue. And again, blue is going for diamond. Same thing with blue. I think this may be very similar to the car we drew last time, actually. So, we kind of lucked out on German fire on that side. I, I say kind of, because yellow still uh, got us really good. So, that's the end of German fire. Notice, that yet again, we do not have any artillery. Um, should there be artillery, what you would do is you would uh, count the number of undisrupted artillery positions that match the calibers listed on the card. And, and then if it passes the threshold, you resolve the artillery fire against the U.S. units. Okay, uh, engineer phase, so we're clearing more beaches. Uh, let's take a look back here at uh, yeah, the East Beach. Um, uh, yellow did not activate. It was disrupted. Green did activate. Uh, and so, boy, I think what I want to do is I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to clear this hex here, which will... Um, bring the line cleared all the way to this guy. So, you know, everything between those arrows is cleared now. I'm going to move this guy out of the way so I can grab this marker. Uh, yeah, now I'm going to clear then this, this X. And move him back. Okay, so now I've got the cleared markers on the board. Um, the, the east beaches are looking fairly clear of obstacles for when the tide comes in. Uh, moving on to the west beaches, purple and blue activated just like last time, so I'm not going to be able to clear anything over there. Yellow also activated. So, uh, looking through at the line of obstacles, um, purple, purple, yellow activated. I really have nothing. This is the only hex that's already clear, so I'm unable to clear any more hexes uh, on the 29th Infantry Division side. So that will end the HQ phase, and we're now on the U.S. action phase. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. First of all, let me remove these disrupted markers from the uh, German units that got their act together again, which is unfortunately for me, it's all of them. So they all woke up. Uh, as usual, I'll start with my free moves. Uh, leading with the self-preservation move, we'll get this guy to come across. We'll get... Yeah, all these guys have to get off the beaches. Um, I am... Uh, let's see here. We'll do the climb. That's a thing that happens. So we'll move him there and flip that to a climb marker. Um, Self-preservation move. We'll move you in behind them. Actually, move you over here. Yeah, and just kind of funnel people up. I don't want to make a concentrated uh, fire hex, so I do not want to move Golf 216 on top of Fox 216. Um, so I'll just kind of have to move people around a little bit. All right, so I think those are all the free moves that I get on the 29th side. I'm sorry, on the first side. Yep, uh, so now moving over to the 29th, I do get some more self-preservation moves. Oh, boy, I am just really not happy with the amount of forces that I have. Uh, here for the, the 29th. I do not have enough really to get anything going. Um, but that's why they pay me the big bucks. Uh, again, I've got to move closer to a protective hex side. So uh, uh, Kilo 316 there is actually in a really interesting position. He can go a lot of different ways. Um, 
uh, and uh, get to a protective hexide. What I'm going to have him do for now is I'm actually going to have him move straight south because next turn I'll have uh, some leadership coming in and then they will be adjacent to him. You know what? I take that back. I don't want him doing that. <laughs> and I'm taking that back. Uh, hi, Nicholas, uh, joining us uh, on the Vassal server. Yeah, good to see you. Um, because I'm, that's going to lead me to a concentrated target situation. So unfortunately, I have to go here. This guy's going to push up there, and that's just going to have to be what we do. Let me let me roll that back a little bit, actually. Let me see. If there's another way for me to do that. Okay. Um, so. Just seeing if there's another way for me to do that so I can position these guys within stacking limits. I'm sorry, within, uh, uh, you know, not making concentrated targets. And I think, I think that there really isn't, if, unless I want to have a guy sit, which is essentially wasting an activation. So I think I do do what I had done, and I'll just push all these guys up a hex. There we go. Okay. Um, let's see, got a couple more infantry units doing self-preservation move here. This guy gets, this is a, this is like the one not terrible hex. <laughs> Just a lot of sporadic fire. It's kind of the hole in the defensive position. Uh, here, there's nothing but terrible, so we'll have this guy move uh, there. Okay, oh, and like I said, with the other guy, we had the cliff climb marker, so we'll move him and change that to just be a normal climb. So he's now made it up the cliff, but he's still uh, reorganizing. So perhaps the two of these guys can attack this position in another turn. So I think that is it for my eligible free moves. So what I have left now are my two uh, limited uh, activation moves. Um, a number of things that I'm thinking about. Uh, first one is um, I can't attack across this bluff hex side here between uh, easy 216 and the 75. So he's going to have to move if he wants to get someplace. I'm going to have to move him. However, I don't think I want to move him into that intense field of fire now that I've got this 88. So what I think I might, might do instead is... Uh, so this is going to be a very difficult attack. Attacking with K316 uh, to the 88 across the shingle. It's it's a German unit with a death marker. His strength's going to be doubled, and I'm already taking a step loss. So this is where, you know, you, those limited activations you really wrestle with. Do I use my tanks to barrage and suppress, and then I can move? But, you know, I still, again, would like to attack. Uh, I've, got, I've got a couple green units here, uh, units within the green field of fire, and, and this guy's got a death marker again. So let me start with that. I think I do want to attack this green unit one more time. Um, and so it requires a browning, and it's strength two, double due to the shingle. And so I've, I've got him way beat. So I will, and, and if you're following along on any of the play aids, you're looking at the uh, U.S. attack results chart. So I have the required units. I'm more than double his strength, uh, and he does have an unrevealed marker. So I've got to switch, and I'll grab that marker and reveal it. And it's just a good old-fashioned two. So um, uh, yet again, I reevaluate the chart. I do have the required weapons. Uh, my attack strength is greater than his. My six is greater than his four, but not double. And he has a revealed depth marker. So the depth marker, yet again, is gone. Uh, and the position, <coughs> pardon me, position is disrupted. So essentially I'm back to the board state that I was last year. I'm sorry, last turn. Uh, mark that guy as having taken an action. And I'm now down to one action on this sector. And this is just going to kill me making this choice. I, 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 I really want to suppress uh, this 88, or at least, you know, take him out. Bringing uh, easy 216 up behind him, I could attack him next turn and hope that yellow doesn't activate. And even if the yellow does activate, I lose a step, and I'm not, I'm attacking without having gone across the, uh, any hex side that provides him any protection. Um, and, potentially, I can combine actions and get both of these guys to attack at once. But, or do I just want to, you know, provide covering fire with uh, one of these tanks um, to suppress uh, and then next turn be able to move and, and not worry about it. So while I mull that over, I'm going to have to think about that. Let me take a look over here at the other beach to see if there's an obvious play. So uh, unfortunately, <laughs> ugh, there's not a lot of obvious anything. Um, I think the one obvious play is I do uh, repeat this assault across the shingle. Um, 
between uh, uh, Easy and Frank uh, 216 and uh, their unit. It does not have an unrevealed depth marker, so I uh, my four to the two, I have the required units, attack strength is double, the German unit is alone, so the German unit is now defeated. So I will eliminate that unit. Uh, boy, we can um, uh, actually take him. We can all breathe a sigh of relief and pat ourselves on the backs here. We 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 did it. <laughs> we did it, everybody. Uh, so um, half of that position is now uh, eliminated. Uh, but that that said, the other half is really at full strength of the depth marker, and um, uh, there's no saying that we're not going to get a reinforcement that pops in there before we can take that position. So we've got to rush in there before the Germans do. So now I have one more activation. Honestly, I'm halfway tempted to just, you know, forsake draw D3 here. I think I, I'm just throwing things into a meat grinder. And while I had a little success there, I don't think that that's where my strength is. As of right now, my strength is appears to be here near draw D1. Um, but I've got this whole clump here that could eventually work their way up too. Um, one thing to note as you you know go further, of course, it's always good to read the rules <laughs> and understand, particularly for scoring and winning, to understand how it is to win a game. Uh, we're going to have to control essentially the hexes around the draws uh, to count them for a victory condition. This is also a very difficult draw to uh, to score. Uh, this draw here is a much easier one to score, but as you can tell right now, it's also fairly solidly defended. So obviously, these units uh, here. Um, Dog and, and Baker, uh, 116, are, are going to be heading towards draw D1. That's that's pretty clear. Um, but what do I do with Kilo 316, India 316, and, and Char uh, Charlie uh, 116? Those are, those are my questions. Um, uh, and where do I push that effort? Um, I, I ask this because I do have a couple of tanks up. That can essentially, I think that's what I have left to do is either move tanks or, or use them to um, provide fire support. Um, this one could essentially knock out the yellow position. That would actually be a pretty, or, or disrupt it. That'd be a pretty big deal. Um, 2A743 could uh, attempt to help with brown here. Um, since I'm looking at these guys more uh, in in the middle of the speech, I think I'm going to have to take uh, the 75, uh, and I'm going to activate this diamond tank. And so looking at the tank barrage fire table, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a card, and I'm going to compare the attacking unit's symbol, in this case a diamond, with the German color and the card, and we'll see what happens. So let me, let me oops, uh, here we go. So let me go ahead and do that. I have a diamond. I do not have yellow. So let's see what happens here. Uh, I have the barraging unit symbol, strength four, a German unit with no depth markers disrupted. You know, with the depth markers unaffected. Okay, so the depth marker here uh, made that uh, not happen. So I will mark him as action taken. Okay, so I'm done here on the West Beach. Not quite what I had hoped for. Um, a little bit of a break, but we're more than halfway to uh, <laughs> the catastrophic loss. So uh, let's hope that nothing terrible happens. Back here to the East Beach. I have one action remaining. Um, boy, I don't know. Um, Dutch, what do you think? What do you think I should do with this uh, remaining activation? Don't... Don't worry about the rules, right? Like, just role play this. What what looks less disgusting to you? <laughs> well, uh, you're, you're going to have to go on the left side, correct? Uh, keep in mind, you're upside down, so the left side of the board is the east side. No, I understand. Oh, okay. So you're good. Like, you, you have to use that last action on the west side or can you put that I, I have to use it on the east side of the board. Uh, if you notice on the west side of the board, uh, the area of responsibility of the 29th, I have two action taken markers placed on the east side of the board uh, for the 1st Infantry Division. I only have one, so I must use it uh, in the 1st Infantry Division uh, AOR. Is there anything you do with those tanks? Then? That's right. I could do a thing with the tank. And, and the thing that I think would probably be the best thing to do with the tank would be to try and disrupt uh, this position. But as you just saw, right, essentially... The, this this uh, German position here in yellow is the one I'm most concerned about, right? 
and it's got a depth marker, which means I have to match the color when I flip that card, which I believe there are six colors. Let's take a look at the board, right? I've got red, purple, yellow, brown, blue. Um, is that it? Red, purple, yellow, brown, blue. There are five colors, five or six colors. Green. Green. There's the sixth color. So there are six colors, three of which are on any given card, right? So I've got a 50-50 chance, essentially, of um, disrupting that unit. Okay, so there's the statistic there. If I use a tank for a barrage, I have a 50-50 chance of disrupting. Now, that being said, um, when the Germans go to activate and I pull a German fire card, the yellow position has a 50-50% chance to activate and fire, right? So I can have a 50% chance of disrupting. I can have a 50% chance of getting torn to ribbons if I move into a steady fire. Or I can, you know, try the attack. <laughs> Which... Yeah, <laughs> um, which so that hex side between uh, the 88 and kilo is a shingle. So we're going to double the strength of whatever that is on the other side of that 88 marker. So if it's a one, it becomes a two. If it's two, it becomes a, it becomes a four. And I am missing half of the require. Oh, 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 darn! Um, I I just saw a maybe, but I'm not going to be able to do it. Um, I'm missing half of the uh, required. Um, weapons, right? I mean, Kilo now only has a bazooka, a browning, and demolitions. So, in the event that the I need something else to take out that position, um, uh, we'll be out of luck. The, the idea I had is, if you look at Mike, right behind Kilo, he has a range of two, which means that, he, generally, he can bring his fire to bear, uh, helping out an adjacent unit in their attack. Awesome, right? But there's a problem. It requires an activation. <laughs> so I already took my activation on green, so I'm not going to be able to coordinate to bring Mike in. I, I you know, I think let's just do it. Let's just uh, no, no. Actually, I'm going to go. I'm going to go middle of the road. I'm going to activate Echo or Easy. Um, you, you all will pardon me for using the NATO phonetic, which is the one that comes ahead more often for me. Um, and I will move him into the lion's mouth. What this is going to mean is that next turn he will be attacking either at full across um, no hex side that gives a disruption or he'll be in the same position as Kilo, right? He'll take one hit but he won't have the disruption. So I'm trading you know, action now for action later and I'm hoping yellow doesn't come up. All right, but anyway, so the, the, this is the part I love about this game, that where, where you, you have these very limited activations, you've got a lot you want to do, the beach is starting to get crowded, until you start to get heroes, or these leaders uh, landing on the beaches, um, you're very limited in your agency, uh, and so you've really got to make the best of a couple of tough situations. So, okay, I'll do end of turn adjustments. Um, I'll tell you what, folks, we will uh, call that a day on uh, uh, today's stream, and... Uh, uh, recording. Um, we'll post this to YouTube and link to it over on the, the Reddit page uh, for anyone that uh, missed it, missed it live. And, uh, you know, what I might do if people are interested in seeing how this finishes is I might record uh, me wrapping up the game and, and post a uh, an epilogue uh, if, if folks are interested in that. But, uh, yeah, um, looking great here on the east, looking like garbage here on the west. My my guess is that we're going to have a loss due to uh, catastrophic losses of the 29th Infantry Division. I think I think the first is going to actually do really well at securing their draws. I think uh, draw E3 here is probably going to be fairly well secured, um, but I think I think the 29th is just going to fall apart. That's my guess. All right, so. Um, uh, anything before uh, we part? Just thank you very much for doing this. Yeah, my pleasure. Hopefully, uh, you know, uh, this is well received. Uh, if people are interested, uh, happy to do this with some other titles uh, or get in some guest streamers to uh, do games that I don't own or I'm unfamiliar with. But, uh, you know, happy, happy to have people here. And uh, thanks, folks, for joining and joining the stream. And, uh, well, you know, we'll see you around the interwebs. Take care.